Let's look at how we can add some detail to a function signature to help any programmer that might be using that function understand what types of arguments to pass into it and what they can expect to get back from it. If you look here, I have defined a function, calculate pyramid volume, and I gave it three parameters, length, width, and height. And it simply takes those three parameters, gets the product of them, divides them by three, and returns that to the caller. So down below the function here, I'm going to say result equals, and I'm going to call the function, and I'm going to pass it in a pyramid with length 5, width 5, and height 5. And then down below that, I will print out my result. Now, if I hover over this function name here, the pop-up tells us that it takes length of any, width of any, height of any, and the return type is any. And where that any is, is the data type that we would either pass in for the parameter or the return type, which is what's after the arrow. So we don't really know what types of arguments we're supposed to pass into this function. We don't know if it's in numeric values like integers or floats, or if it's string values or lists or what. So we are going to add some type hinting to help whoever might be using this function know what they're supposed to pass into it. And we do this by going into our parameters. And after the variable name, we put a colon, and then we can put the data type that is expected to be passed in for that argument. Now, if you wanted to do multiple data types, you could do a set of quotes, type in one data type, then do the pipe character, and then type in another data type. And just to make this a little bit easier to see after with, I will go ahead and do one more. I think it'll fit. So I'll do my int, then pipe, and then float. And then after this comma, I'm going to hit enter, which will push this text down just so that it doesn't get off the side of my screen here. And then after height, I will do one more int, and then pipe character and float. And then after the parenthesis, but before the colon, I am going to put in a function annotation arrow, which is made up of a dash and a right chevron. And then since this is returning a quotient, a quotient will always be a float, I am going to set the return type to be a float. And now if I hover over this function name, we'll see that next to length, width, and height, we get int and float indicating that we should pass in some sort of numeric value and that we should expect the return type to be a float. So if I run this, we'll get the output of 41 point, whole bunch of sixes and a four, which is a float. And now if I were to call this or any other programmer using my code were to call this, they would know exactly what types of arguments that they should pass into this function. Now, the thing is, Python does not enforce this. So if I were to do something like pass in a string here, I'm going to get a type error, but it's not from the function call itself. It's from trying to divide this string here by three. And we'll see that right here, it says for division, string, and int. And if you'll recall, when you use the multiplication operator with a string and int, so when I pass the string five in as length and then the multiplication operator tries to multiply that by five. It is just going to repeat this string five, five times. And then it's going to try to repeat the five string fives by five again, making this right here come out to 25 string fives divided by three. So that's why we're getting this unsupported operand type error. Now let's take a look at how we can take this one step further by adding additional information using doc strings. Doc strings can be used on packages, modules, classes, and functions and they are a way to provide additional information. So let's look at the way that this works with a function. As you'll see here, I have my calculate pyramid volume function, and then below it, I have this triple quoted string, and it is the first line after my function definition. I put this triple quoted string, and there are different ways to format these, but this style here is the Google style which says that on the first line with the first opening triple quote, you should have a single sentence that explains what the, or that says what the function is or does. And then below that, you would put any additional information. And then below that, you would have your arguments, your return types, your errors that it might raise. So if we look at this, it says it calculates the volume of a pyramid. And then under args, I have my length, width, and height. And I give a little more information about it. So I have that length is the length of the pyramid's base, width is the width of the pyramid's base, and height is the pyramid's height. And then I have a returns, and I have a float containing the pyramid's volume, and that's where I end the string. If I hover over this function, I get all this extra information down here on the bottom. 
saying that it calculates the volume of a pyramid, it explains what the different parameters are for, and it tells me what it's going to be returning. So doc strings and type hinting are not necessary, but they help tremendously with organizing your code and understanding what that code is supposed to be doing. And they especially help when it's other programmers or it's code that you haven't seen in a while and you're coming back to it. It'll just really help you understand what it's doing and, and how to use it.